Hello everyone, back to you in today's first video, we're going to have a look at the ECMDF Ensembles Next 30 Days for today's uh, video. So this is a long-range ECM WF forecasting uh, model, taking us through to the second half of uh, August. Been a very hot summer, of course, across uh, much of northern and western Europe, been really dry uh, as well across the northwest of Europe too. We're going to see whether the ECMWF uh, extended model is forecasting any change in the next uh, 30 days. Today's second video will be coming up on the homepage and Matt Twin is going to have a look at the weather for the next week to 10 days. So we'll bring all of the heatwave latest to you in today's uh, second video update. But starting it off is the ECM uh, 30 day look ahead and uh, we're using the Hungarian uh, Met Office for this one so a big thank you for them uh, for supplying these charts um, can't show you the uh, mean sea level pressure and 500 millibar height anomalies with this, we can only show you temperature and precipitation anomalies uh, but you get a broad idea of what model is um, forecasting uh, based on those temperature and uh, precipitation uh, anomalies. So we're going to start off with uh, week one. These are broken down into week periods. So the first week period is kind of like week one. It's also week 30 for the year, for 2018. But uh, it's week one for the forecasting period that we're interested in, taking us from the 23rd through to the 29th of July. And the heat wave goes on in the week ahead. So, again, we have a very, very hot scene, way above average across Scandinavia, across uh, Denmark, Germany, France, Belgium, Holland. Uh, again, seeing temperature anomalies between 6 to 10 degrees above average in some areas. For the UK and Ireland, it remains a very warm scene in the week ahead. Temperature normally is 3 to 6 degrees above average for much of eastern and southeastern Britain. It's a little closer to average for western Scotland and also for Ireland. So temperature there just a little bit above average in the week ahead. Telling us that we have got a slightly more uh, slightly more of an Atlantic influence uh, in those very far western and northwestern uh, parts of Scotland and Ireland. But essentially, the northwest of Europe, it remains, it has been all the way through this summer, going right way back to May. It remains a very warm scene in the week ahead. Now we go down to southern Europe and you'll see that the temperature anomalies there are much closer to average, or in some instances, a little bit cooler than average. So Across uh, Spain and Portugal, we've got a mix of uh, cooler than average in the south and southwest of Spain and warmer than average in the northeast of Spain. The central basin of the Mediterranean is forecast to be warmer than average, but southern Italy is forecast to be cooler than average. Over the Asiatic into the Balkans, a little bit cooler than average uh, there. And then going down into the extreme southeast, so parts of Greece, again, coming out a little bit cooler than average in some areas. Other areas are coming out a little bit warmer than average. Now, uh, of course, we're hearing about these devastating wildfires that are taking place uh, across uh, some parts of Greece at the moment. Uh, I just want to talk a little bit about that because the temperature anomalies here are anomalies to average. So you would look at that and probably think that southeastern Europe and southwestern Spain and Portugal are quite cool. That is just an anomaly to average. So it's suggesting that in the week ahead, the anomaly to average in parts of Southeast Europe and also parts of uh, Southwest Europe is going to be around uh, one or two degrees cooler than average. But that's still going to be very, very hot because it's down across the Mediterranean. So even if you're shaving off a couple of degrees, still going to be very hot conditions, of course, because it's the middle of summer in the Mediterranean. Uh, and so despite the fact that it's a little bit cooler than average, according to the model, it will be in the weekend being forecast to be, let's say, a little bit cooler than average in some of those Mediterranean regions, it will still be very, very hot. It will still be hot enough for um, the problems that we're seeing at the moment, unfortunately, in some parts of Greece. So always remember with this is that it is anomalies to average, which actually makes what's going on across northern Europe even more dramatic because we're seeing anomalies to average across Scandinavia and across Germany six to ten degrees above average in some of those places 
And so that makes it even more dramatic, I suppose, if you think that it's summer, so it's already going to be quite warm uh, across Germany in particular. It's going to be fairly hot in July because uh, it's uh, sort of central Europe, so the heat will build anyway. So 10 degrees above average or 6 to 10 degrees above average in Germany is a very, very dramatically hot uh, temperature anomaly in the middle of the summer. So it's sort of something you always have to bear in mind when you're talking about anomalies to average. As far as precipitation is concerned, so the coming week, again, going from the 23rd, 29th of July, shows no real change on the pattern that we've had all the way through the summer. So again, much of northern Europe is coming out substantially drier than average. Uh, we're seeing in many places sort of uh, 60 to 30, 60 percent of uh, below average rainfall for those northwestern parts of Europe. And in the southeast of Europe, it does look a little bit wetter than average down there. It's forecasting to be a little bit wetter than average, particularly from the Balkans through to the Black Sea. Those areas are looking quite uh, wet. Down towards Greece, it is coming out a little bit wetter than average in uh, those areas as well or nearer normal uh, with the precipitation probably down to thunderstorms bear in mind the gates are normally so it's still going to be very dry in the uh, sort of Mediterranean areas like Greece Cyprus it will still be very dry because these are anomalies uh, to average so it's a very dry time of year even if it's a little bit wetter than average it will still generally be on the very dry side we come down to southwest of europe so into france spain portugal those areas are also forecasting to be average to drier than average so you can see where the high pressure is going to be sitting in the week ahead we're going to have lots of high pressure across central and uh, northern parts of europe pressure may not be low in the southeast of europe but it will be weaker in the southeast of Europe. I mean, it does look as though there's just a little bit more influence from the Atlantic, and that's backed up by the temperature anomaly. Uh, just a little bit more influence from the Atlantic, brushing in, grazing in to island, uh, northern and western parts of uh, Scotland. The Atlantic is trying to have a bit of a go in the week ahead. Then we go through to uh, week two temperature anomalies. These ones take us from the 30th of July through to the 5th of August. And again, the heat wave just goes on and on across much of northern, northwestern Europe too, and into the British Isles. Again, we're seeing temperature anomalies coming out three to six degrees above average quite widely. Uh, so there'll be loads of high pressure sitting across sort of northern and central parts of Europe uh, dragging up that air from a southerly to southeast direction down into the Mediterranean so there we've got cooler anomalies to average but will still be very warm or very hot seen uh, down across much of the Med. Precipitation anomalies looking like that so broadly no change again as we go into the start of August it's looking average to drier than average with the rainfall anomalies across many northern parts of Europe, UK and Ireland and included in that. In fact, it looks as though that little bit of a push from the Atlantic that we saw evidence of in week one, just to the west of Scotland Island, it looks as though that's fading out by week two. So if anything, the high pressure may be strengthening here as we go through into the start of August across uh, particularly the northwest of Europe. Down into southern Europe, we've got average to slightly wetter than average anomalies uh, down there, Spain and Portugal coming out close to average, southern Italy coming out wetter than average, uh, the Balkans uh, coming out wetter than average, and down towards Greece and also over towards Turkey, we come out ever so slightly uh, on the uh, above average side with the rainfall. So again, we continue to see a north, uh, northwest to south, southeast split with the uh, precipitation and also the temperature anomalies. Week 3 temperature anomaly is for Europe looking like this from the 6th to the 12th of August. Uh, it remains very much warmer than average across Scandinavia. This long, long, hot uh, Scandinavian summer continues. These hotter than average temperature anomalies continue for Germany, for Belgium, for Holland, for Denmark, for France uh, as well. And also going over uh, towards Poland. Uh, the far northwest, UK and Ireland, again, it's still coming out uh, warmer than average, around one to three degrees above average, so the anomaly is easing ever so slightly 
in the northwest of Europe, but it is still uh, very substantially, uh, very substantially more of an average there through the Mediterranean. Overall, it looks like it is starting to warm up a little bit, actually, going quite a bit above average through this central basin of the uh, Mediterranean. Parts of Spain and Portugal also going uh, warmer than average. In the southeast, temperatures remain, again, uh, closer to normal. And then we have a look at the precipitation. The north-south split continues through for precipitation from the 6th to 12th of August. No changes. Just that this, uh, over time, as we go further out, the signal is weakening a little bit, but essentially it's still drier than average across north Northern parts of Europe, UK, Ireland, Scandinavia, uh, back towards uh, the Baltic states, continuing to be uh, average to dry of an average there. This central swathe of Europe is going closer to average, so we may be seeing uh, some uh, thunderstorms breaking out there. Southern Europe, uh, again, coming out a little bit on the wetter than average side for week three. And then we're through to week four, so the final week uh, of the forecast period, which is the 13th through to the 19th of August, comes out again substantially warmer than average for much of Northern Europe. Uh, and across Southern Europe again, we're coming out uh, average to some places warmer than average. Central Basin of the Mediterranean looks like uh, looks quite warm. But uh, some other areas are coming out average to a bit cooler than average. Notice uh, just lowering that temperature normally a little bit uh, for Scotland and Ireland going close to average uh, there. So again, that's just a little bit more of an influence from the Atlantic beginning to pick up uh, by the time you get through to the uh, to middle of August. But generally still very warm scene across much of Central and Northern Europe in the middle of August. Precipitation-wise, finally... From the 13th to the 19th of August. So we're gradually losing that uh, drive and average seal. The drive and average anomalies are being pushed back to the north of Scandinavia, uh, really, with most other areas across Europe by this point looking average to. Uh, even a bit above average with rainfall in some of those uh, Mediterranean regions. Now, what could be going on there is that just over time we're losing uh, the signal. But combined with the temperature anomalies, uh, which do show a little bit of a cool down starting to take place for Scotland and Ireland in particular, but also for some parts of Wales and Northern England as well, uh, putting the two things together, just possible that by the middle of August we might be starting to pick up a little bit more of an Atlantic influence there across the very, very far northwest of Europe. But again, I have to emphasise, but much of northern Europe, uh, Scandinavia in particular, and also down to central parts uh, like Germany, Poland, uh, the low countries, it remains a really warm scene even into the middle part of August. So no real changes showing up uh, on this 30-day outlook. It looks like we're broadly keeping things as we have had it through this summer, which is a uh, long, hot, dry, drought summer, heatwave summer for much of northern, central and western Europe. This is set to continue at least for the next two weeks. Uh, let's get through to weeks three and four, obviously, by then. It's a little bit further out, so confidence is falling. But broadly, certainly going into the first week of August, it looks like the heat wave goes on for much of northern and northwestern parts of Europe. Down into southern Europe, uh, the anomalies to average are not as hot, but of course there it is still very hot anyway, because it's the middle of the summer. Right, so do it all again next week, uh, and we'll see whether there's any signs uh, going to second half of July, uh, second half of August, I should say, any signs of a breakdown to this prolonged heat wave and drought for uh, particularly northern and western parts of Europe. Coming up later on today, we're going to have uh, the week to 10 day outlook. That's going to bring you up to date with all of the heat wave latest. But uh, that's all for now, and thanks for watching.